the next presentation will be uh, uh, from uh, again from the Spain. We have a really a good cooperation with our Spain partners, and the presenter will be Ruben Paz from University of La Pasma, Las Pasmas uh, de Gran Canaria from Spain, with the title "Production of Synthetic Models by Additive Manufacturing for Neurosurgical Training." So, Ruben, thank you very much. Hello, your, can you hear me? For your support, yes, and we can see your presentation. Thank you okay. very much for your support, and please uh, support. Okay, so hello everybody. This is uh, Ruben Paz from the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria. And today, my well, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting us to uh, explain our project here, our research in this very interesting workshop about additive manufacturing in the medical in medical application of the Inexadam project. And my presentation today is about the production of uh, synthetic models by additive manufacturing for a uh, neurosurgical training. This is uh, one of the results, or one of the most important results of a brain IT project. I don't know if you can see here this, uh, this logo here. Is, uh, it was a project uh, from the Erasmus Plus program in which uh, we did uh, some training materials for some workshop of uh, medical students, students from medicine. And I'm going to explain how we did that, uh, those uh, training materials. In this project, uh, we had the uh, University of uh, Sibiu in Romania, one hospital also in Romania, the, the University of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, and the University Nicolo Cusano from Rome. So uh, my presentation is divided into two parts. First of all, I have the, the first one uh, that was uh, the development of real case training materials for neuro-oncology. Uh, these training materials were used for the second summer school of uh, that project, of the Brain IT project. Uh, we did two cases, uh, one meningioma case and one glioma case. I will explain how we did all these uh, training materials. And also, we, I will briefly explain the, um, how we created an uh, aneurysm, a synthetic aneurysm, for the third summer school that in this case was together with the second summer school due to uh, COVID disease limitations. We had to do both together in last August. Uh, well, and I will explain how we did uh, this aneurysm. So for the first case is the meningio meningioma case. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, the meningioma case is la a brain tumor that arises from the meninges. The meninges is this layer surrounding the, the brain, one of the most important ones. And the, the tumor in this uh, CT images can be observed here. You can see that it's very close to the meninges because it, it starts there. And uh, our, our neurosurgeons told us to, that we should develop uh, uh, synthetic models, trying to uh, give more consistency to this part, of, to this tumor than to the brain. So we, have a, we need a stiffer material here. So the idea was to, to develop a synthetic model uh, with this tumor and using these uh, real scan images. And, uh, do many, maybe 10, 10 different uh, synthetic models so that the students could practice the cutting the skull, uh, removing the, the tumor, and so on. Okay. So, to do that, the first thing we did was to assess different materials for the manufacturing of the skull. Uh, we focus on material extrusion additive manufacturing. And from, previous, uh, from the previous summer school, uh, we had selected this material, this filament, that the smart, smart, smart fill EP filament, that is a PLA filament, but with some calcium carbonate. So uh, according to previous tests we did, uh, this material was more similar to the real bone than, uh, than a standard PLA. So we used this material because the cutting process, the cutting forces and so on were more similar. Uh, Apart from that, uh, we also decided that, uh, well, this, this filament uh, has some problems when we you print it because, uh, because of the content of calcium carbonate, uh, this uh, 
makes the printing more difficult because it uh, tends to accumulate powder in the in the years of the of the extrusion system and to avoid that what we did was to divide the the scan into two parts as you can see on the right we decided to put the good uh, well the smart fill ep filament that is a similar one to the bone uh, just put that uh, material on the region of interest in the working area and use a standard PLA for the rest. Okay, so like this, we avoid printing problems that, uh, well, when you are printing uh, skulls like this that are big and maybe 20 hours of printing, so it is important to, to minimize the, the risks. Okay. On the other hand, uh, as the students were going to use uh, some hand tools, like this uh, drill, the Hudson drill and the Gigi saw, uh, we decided to, to test different infill densities to see which one was more appropriate for the cutting process. Okay, so finally we chose 30% uh, of infill density with the smart EP filament. And uh, so, uh, let's say that at the end we have uh, this uh, part with 30% infill density and the calcium carbonate filament and the rest of the skull that is not going to be used just for aesthetic, uh, the non-working area with the standard PLA with 20% uh, in field density, okay? So this was regarding the skull, but now we wanted to mimic or to manufacture the, the brain. So in this case, the idea was to use uh, silicones or liquid materials that could be cured in, the, in a mold. And then in this case, uh, what we did was to compare different type of silicones and even we tested this, uh, this alginate. It didn't work because it was too stiff and not, well, it, not, it was not stable over time. So we focused in this, uh, on these two silicones. We did uh, many different uh, combinations of, uh, of these silicones with the, the, with the two components. Uh, and did uh, some compression test, as you can see here. With this, uh, we obtained the, the compressive elastic, elastic modulus, and uh, we compare well all the cases. And according to the bibliography, more or less the, the the ideal value for the elastic modulus for the for mimicking the brain was around 21 kilopascals. Okay, so in this case. We did a preliminary selection. It was around 37, more or less. But uh, after that, we decided that we wanted to reduce this more. Okay, so this one was the Ecoflex one, the Ecoflex uh, silicon. But uh, we the, the provider told us that we could add another component that was the slacker to reduce the the stiffness. So we did different uh, combinations. You can see each row is a different material and different replicas. And uh, we did different uh, samples and our neurosurgeons uh, tested them. They test the, 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 the cylinders and touch it and so on. And finally, they selected this one, the 113 uh, combination. So that means uh, one from component A, one from component B, and three parts of a slacker component. Okay, so this was the final selection for the for the brain. Uh, well, in the I have to say that in the case of the brain, uh, this component, the slacker, was uh, very this was much expensive than the A and B components. So we decided to divide the, the brain into two parts. One part that would be the working area where the students uh, will cut and so on, and the rest that uh, will not be used. So uh, for that, uh, we developed some modes. I will explain this later. But the general idea is that we pure the, the softer silicon around the tumor, and then the standard silicon in the rest of the, of the brain in order to reduce the the cost of the printing, of, well, of the printing of the of the synthetic models. So this is the summary: the brain. We have uh, in the working area the the silicon with the slacker, and in the non-working area the standard silicon without slacker. Regarding the tumor, uh, we use the same 
as the, the, the our neurosurgeons told us that the tumor had to be a little bit stiffer, we used uh, the silicone without the slacker and also added some crushed PLA from the supports of the printings uh, to simulate the calcification inside the tumor, as you can see here, and also some pigments to, well, to obtain a better appearance of the, of the tumor. Apart from that, uh, as I told you, around the brain, we have the duramater. Well, well, apart from that, we have other layers, but the main one is the duramater, the meninges. So to produce that, we just pure some silicon in a flat surface and obtain a thin layer like this, a thin sheet that we placed over the, over the brain, okay? And of course, I'm talking about uh, pure in silicon and so on. And we did that uh, the molds with uh, 3D printing, with uh, material extrusion with uh, PLA, okay? So uh, this was the general process. Uh, in order to do the design and manufacturing and so on, what we did was to start with the computer tomography images, the Tycoon files. We did a segmentation process, in this case, in the software 3D slicer. After that, we obtained the, the model, the 3D model, the STL. We used, we did some CAD design. I will explain this now uh, to add uh, features and so on. We obtained the final STL with 3D printed and we obtained the final synthetic models, sometimes uh, by pure in the silicons and so on. I will explain this later. So regarding the segmentation of the skull, uh, well, mm, we started from the CT images. We did the segmentation of the skull, as you can see here, with the 3D slicer. After that, we also did uh, with uh, some handwork. Uh, we did the segmentation of the tumor, that is this part here. But we, what we wanted was the mold of the tumor. So we added 10 millimeters thickness to and remove the, in, the internal part to obtain a hollow part that would be the mold for puring the, the material that will mimic the tumor, okay? Regarding the, the segmentation of the brain, well, we did the same. In this case, we combined the skull and the tumor. We added uh, an, an additional three millimeter thinness. And with that, we obtained this here that is like a mold for the brain, okay? At the end, we had this. Uh, on the left, we have the skull. And you can not see the, the hollow, but it's hollow. Uh, we have the tumor, the, the mole of the tumor, and the mole of the brain. Okay, so with this, uh, we use the SolidWorks software, that is a CAD software. We imported the STL file. And we, the first thing we did was uh, to divide the, the skull into two different parts, the working area and non-working area, so that we could use the standard PLA filament for this part and the calcium carbonate filament for this part. We also added some features at the beginning were like this, but we modify this and put some features in order to be able to assemble, uh, to assemble this, uh, the skull with a base. Okay, so to put inside the, the brain and close the, the skull. Okay. Uh, here you can see, well, some design steps to make the, the base. Uh, here you can see, well, some hollows uh, to put the screws and, and so on. And here you can see the, the, well, the, the skull and the base. You, we, we screw the, the base. And here we have also some other holes to fix all this to a holder I will show later. It's like a, a holder that we place on the table and then the students can orientate the, the skull and work there, okay? So here you can see the the, print, the 3D printed skull, okay? And the base on the right, this is the base. So we put this here with the brain in the middle and just like this, we obtain the, the final synthetic models. Regarding the brain mold, uh, we used the previously cemented file. First of all, we did a flat cut, well, some cut features. We added here also some tabs 
to join uh, both parts of the mold because we divided this into two parts to facilitate the, the molding process. And also we added like, a, well, a cube on the base to, to stabilize the, the mold, okay? You can see here that the mold of the brain has the shape of the tumor. So when we produce the brain, we will have a hollow in which we put, we put the, the tumor, okay? Uh, this is also one part of the brain mold. Uh, as I told you before, we wanted to put uh, the softer silicon around the, the tumor and the rest with the standard silicon. So we did this part of the mold that we placed here. Well, I will show you. Well, this is the mold brain, the two parts. And you can see here this other part of the mold so that we can pure the silicon, the softer silicon here. And when we cure the silicon, we remove this and we pure the rest of the silicon, the, the standard silicon. So here you can see the first pouring, the, the first, the softer silicon surrounding the well, the, the, the hollow of the tumor. And here you can see after the second puring of the silicon and the final, this is the final brain without the tumor. Okay. So to make the tumor, we use the previously cemented uh, uh, STL file. Uh, we cut it, we divided this into two parts. As you can see here, we added some tabs, a hopper, uh, a cube to stabilize the model and so on. So the idea was to pure here the silicon with the, peg, with the pigments and with the crushed uh, PLA to mimic the, the calcification inside the, the tumor. So here you can see the 3D printed mold of the tumor. Here you can see the mixer with the PLA. We pure that into the mold. And after the curing process, we had this. This is a, this really yellow is just some plaster to seal the, the mold, okay? So, well, uh, as you can see here uh, in the background, you can see that we have the, the brain we put the, the tumor inside the brain, and this is the, the meninges that we placed on the brain, okay? So after that, well, you cannot see here the, the, that uh, layer, but we place there the, the meninges, the tunamator, and then we put this brain inside the mold, the, inside the, the skull, sorry. You can see this, we close it with the screws, and finally, with these holes, we play, we well, we tight the complete uh, skull to this holder that allows us to orientate the the synthetic models for the for the training session. Okay. Well, and you can see here some the students working. This was the last uh, August. The students working with the these uh, training materials. Uh, you can see here after the cutting and so on. And you can see, well, they cut the, the skull, then they cut the, the duramater, they remove this uh, with the hand tools, they remove the tumor. After that, they uh, sew the, the duramater and finally they sew the, the skull, they put the skull back, okay? So this was the first case. Uh, the second case is more, more or less similar. I will go faster. Uh, it was a glioma case. Uh, the difference is that the tumor is not close to the, to the meninges, but in the middle of the brain. So in these cases, usually the consistency of the tumor is uh, lower than the brain, even they used to remove it by vacuum, okay? So uh, the idea, you can see here, this is one of the final steps, but the idea was to uh, leave like a hollow inside the brain and infiltrate uh, a material that could mimic the, the tumor. And in this case, we selected a sodium alginate, well, a solution of uh, sodium alginate with water that we placed there, and then the student had to remove with a vacuum machine, okay? So uh, what we did was more or less the same. In, in this case, we had the MRI, uh, well, the MR images. We, we had the daikon files. We did the cementation again in 3D slicer. Uh, then we obtained the final, the STLs. 
we introduce them in the CAD design software, obtain the final STL, 3D printing, and did the final synthetic models. Okay. So in this case, well, we uh, thought about different options to make that hollow inside the, inside the, the brain. Uh, I will explain, I think, better with the following images. The first thing we did was the cementation of the skull. In this case, well, the cementation was not so good as in the previous case because we had the MRIs, not the CT images, but they were. So we cemented the skull. We cemented the brain. Uh, well, in this case, we had the brain and what we wanted was the mold of the brain. So we added 10 millimeters thickness to that brain and obtained this, like this is like the mold of the brain, okay? We also segmented this, uh, the tumor that we will use uh, later for the CAD design. And we obtain these three models, the skulls, the, the mole of the brain, and the, the tumor, OK? So we did some similar CAD features as in the previous case. We uh, did a flat cut uh, in the skull. We added uh, some features to join the base. We created the base and so on. We also divided the skull into two different parts to be able to use uh, the calcium carbonate uh, filament here and the PLA filament here. Of course, always the, the working area is around the, the tumor, okay? Uh, so you can see here the, the EP filament and the PLA filament. This is the, the skull. For the brain mold, uh, we did something similar. We did a cut, a flat cut. We added a base to stabilize the, the mold. In this case, as the we don't have uh, we don't need to divide the mold into two parts because the silicone is flexible and we can remove it easily. So you can see here the the brain, the, the mold of the brain. And in order to make the hollow inside the, the brain, what we did was this red part and this black part that we joined with a screw so that we pure the, the standard silicone around this uh, black part, okay? Then we remove this, we place another uh, insert here with the shape of the tumor and we pour the softer silicone. So at the end, we have the softer silicone around the, the tumor and the normal, the standard silicon in the rest of the of the brain. Okay, so you can see here that this is the well the shape of the tumor. We added this to join to allocate uh, accurately the the tumor. And as I told you before, we pure the silicon here, remove the black part, put this insert, and then pure the silicon, the softer silicon around the this part. Okay, you can see here this, uh, the assembly with the 3D printed parts. This was the first uh, puring of this uh, harder silicone. This is the, the shape, the insert to, well, to give the hollow, to leave the hollow of the, with the shape of the tumor. And we, after we allocate this with this uh, part, to obtain a good uh, position of the of this part, we pure the silicone and uh, mm, surround all the tumor with the softer silicone. Okay. After that, we place the the brains inside the inside the skulls, and well, you can see here. And finally, we infiltrated the the alginate that will be the, the tumor, okay? So the, the student had to access, well, had to cut the, the skull, cut the, a little bit the brain, and uh, apply vacuum to remove the, 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 the tumor, that is the, the alginate, okay? So finally, we close the skull, and here you can see some pictures of the students making the hole in the, the skull, then they cut it, they join both uh, the, all the holes. They cut the, well, we also placed here the, the meninges, okay? They cut the meninges, and after that, they, with a vacuum machine, they extract the, 
remove the tumor, they saw the they saw the the meninges and also they saw the you can see here the 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 skull. Okay. So finally, uh, the last case was a, a middle cerebral artery aneurysm. It was a, sh a shorter case. Uh, in this case, uh, well, an aneurysm is like a weakness point of the of the blood vessels. And well, what we want to do is to uh, avoid the flow to go through that point. So the one typical uh, intervention is to put a bypass and uh, add some clips here so that the, the flow goes through the bypass, okay? So in this case, uh, we use another concept. We use uh, material jetting additive manufacturing. Uh, in this case, digital autonomy anatomy printer that is a very a very important well a print a three D printer very specialized or focused on these cases on anatomy cases. Uh, from all the available materials, we use the blood vessel family with the uh, in concrete the uh, vessel wall material. And the first thing we did was to uh, make some tubes with different thickness. For example, we had three millimeter uh, diameter and different thickness of the tubes, 0 0.6, 8, 0 0.8, and 1. And we did uh, that uh, those tubes with different materials from this family, with different uh, hardness from, well, hardness 1, 3, and 6. Okay, so the 6 is the most, the more read, uh, the most rigid one, and one the less one. So we did all these uh, different combination of, uh, let's say, different thickness and different materials. As you can see here, the tubes, well, you don't see the tubes, but these are tubes, okay? And uh, our neurosurgeons uh, did some, some practical sessions with these uh, materials to see which one was the best one for this uh, training session. Uh, in this case, we selected this one. That means 0 0.6 millimeter thickness. That was the minimum uh, that could be printed, let's say. And uh, the a medium stiffness uh, material, okay, of this uh, family and this of this material, okay. With that combination, uh, we did the cementation from the from the images we had. In this case, with the ITK Snap software, we had this picture. This is just a static picture, a picture, and we had used it as a reference because we, from this, uh, from that machine, we could not obtain the 3D model, so we had to do it again. Okay, so we did the cementation process of the well. The cementation process is a focus on the of the, on the blood i mean you, you obtain the blood not the vessels okay so after that we obtain the blood of the vessels and after that we use the mesh mixer software to add uh, the 0 0.6 millimeter thickness and make this hollow okay so we did all the features in this software and at the end as the students uh, were, uh, were going to work in the under the microscope, this uh, the, the well the size of the body of the vessels was too big, so we focused on the region of interest, and we did some cut features to obtain finally these uh, these models. Okay, we had and in order to three D print this, we had to provide the the tubes and the blood inside the tubes. Because in the digital anatomy printer uses a well a very innovative material that is the gel matrix that is a, like a gel that is used for a, as a support material. It's like a well, padding like consistency, so it's easily removable. Okay, with the water jet. So uh, we produce this with those uh, dimensions, and you can see here the all the replicas we had. Okay, with the digital anatomy uh, 3D printer. And finally, the students use this to practice in the workshop uh, under the microscope to do the, the sewing process and, and so on, okay? And um, well, this is all from my side. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention and please let me know if you have any, any questions. Thank you.
Thank you, Ruben, for a very interesting uh, presentation. And uh, as I can see here, there is one suggestion from Harwa Hershak. Uh, okay, you are probably focused yeah. on, your, on your presentation. So he said uh, after your presentation of the first uh, first case that perhaps for brain to bless stift, you can try to mix silicon with the ultrasound gel composed of a mix of polypropylene glycol and water. So this is a uh, his suggestion. The first one, you mean? Uh, after the first one, where, where you compare those different materials and you search for a less stiff material. Mm -hmm. So this okay. is a suggestion. Uh, how can you uh, probably further decrease the stiffness of of uh, of, oh. uh, of the material? Okay. And you mean he also have a question about uh, feedback from your colleagues, neurosurgical trainers and trainees. Mm -hmm. How they were satisfied with, with the, the, the models you prepare for them. Okay, so let's say the, the last question is the, the feedback from the, the, the neurosurgical trainers. Yeah. Uh, well, the students were very, very happy. In fact, we did some uh, a quiz after the, the training session, and they were very, very happy with the workshop and their training materials. So the feedback was very nice. And regarding the neurosurgical training, uh, trainers, uh, trainees, or trainers, sorry. Uh, well, they give us some recommendations to improve the the synthetic models. For example, uh, if I remember well, uh, they wanted to, for example, the meninges, the dunamator, to do it with a harder material. So that is very easy because we can use another silicon or, uh, or change the the composition, and that's all. But at the end, we need the feedback from the neurosurgeons because they are the ones who really know the, the behavior of the material. That's what, that, that, that was one of the main recommendations. And I don't remember if they had another one, but this one was the most uh, easiest to, 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 to apply. That, uh, well, this is the, the last question. Regarding the other ones, uh, let me check because I was thinking. No, the other one is explanation uh, to her about possibility of uh, of uh, mi mixing material. But the first one was uh, from her was a suggestion to com to, to to combine uh, silicon with the ultrasound gel. Yeah, yeah, of course. We have uh, uh, in the, in the case of this question, we we could uh, modify the the proportion of the silicons. Mm -hmm. it, you have three components, so you can play a lot with the with the silicon. In this case, the the selected one was uh, sorry. So here we did different. We have let's say the the preliminary selection with uh, this. This was the the best one. Mm -hmm. But after that, we did many different uh, silicons to the reduce the, the stiffness, and our neurosurgeons like this one, the 113. So we can play a lot, but at the end, uh, it's the decision of the neurosurgeons. Okay, I don't know if this is the question, the, the answer to the question. No, that was more suggestion to try to, to mix ultrasound gel with your materials in order to decrease the, the stiffness. Yeah. Okay. Well, but we can decrease the stiffness just adding more slugger, for example. Okay. Okay. So any other question? I don't know. We have I have more. No, here. no, there are no questions so far. Okay. So uh, Ruben, thank you very much once again for uh, your uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, so uh, that we can uh, realize that preparing a realistic model for uh, medical training at least is not so simple work. So there are a lot of things that you have to take into account. Okay, thank you, thank thank you very, very much, much once again. Bye, thank you.